If no one has told you today, and I'm guessing they haven't, you are working so hard. You are just doing an amazing job. Being an art teacher isn't easy. We juggle so many things all at once and we make it look good. Now, for many students, our class is their favorite special. For many students, it can even be the highlight of their week. We are constantly organizing, teaching, cleaning, planning, creating, entertaining, troubleshooting, and sometimes we're doing more than one of those things at the same time. So it's just inevitable as you're moving along through the school year, you're going to hit some parts of the school year that are just kind of slumps. Sometimes where time just starts going a little bit slower. For me, I'm in at least the ninth or 10th week of January. So there is an update about me. Um, it's like you're in the game of Candyland, right? You're moving through that Candyland board. And at some point you get to that obstacle, that chocolate swamp, and you just sort of get stuck and you're moving, but you're just not really going anywhere. So this video is for art teachers that are feeling a little bit stuck. They're feeling like they're in sort of that, you know, mid-year slump. Sometimes it hits you at different times. So whenever you're finding this video, I hope that it will be helpful for you. Hey there, if we haven't met before, my name is Katie Jarvis and I'm a K through six elementary art teacher. And I teach at a Title I school just outside of Washington, DC. This video is to tell you that you are working so hard and to give a little pep talk to get you through to the end of the school year. First, we're gonna jump into how to better manage your school stress. The first thing that's really been working for me is refreshing my to-do list. Now, if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I use Google Keep. It's a free app. I love it because it syncs. I can see it on my watch. I can see it on my iPhone. I can see it on my iPad. I can see it on my school laptop. It is everywhere and it's really my spot where I record everything. I have more details in other videos. I will link those in the description down below, but I'm refreshing that. Okay, I'm actually looking at those lists. I'm making realistic um, lists for certain block times of the day. So for example, my morning to-do list, okay? This is the list of things that I want to accomplish from the time that I walk into my classroom to that moment when my first class gets here. I write that to-do list the afternoon before. So today when I'm recording this, it's Tuesday, Monday after school, I looked over my lesson plans, I looked around the room, saw what I was able to get done Monday afternoon, and I wrote that to-do list for Tuesday morning. Let a few hours go by, I went home, I looked at that list again, okay? I'm refreshing that list then, because I'm realizing, wow, that's important, but that doesn't have to get done first thing in the morning. I could do this after school. You can kind of start to move things around so that you have a realistic amount of things to get done. You can also identify things that are less important that maybe you could get done in between your classes throughout the day, or maybe as a class is independently working, you could sort of have that job set out and kind of work on it here and there. But it helps me to better use my time. And then I'm constantly looking at that to-do list. I realize when there are things I'm just totally avoiding. I realize when there are things that are like huge things on my list that I really need to break down um, so that it does fit into my day. Now, another thing I would do if I was feeling stuck, and I do this when I am feeling stuck, is I will clean. Just having a clean art room really helps. Now, if you're not already organized, it is definitely worth your time to stay a little bit extra in your classroom and work on organization. Growing up, I was an absolute pig. You would never know that now by looking at my Instagram and watching these YouTube videos because once I became an art teacher, I realized it was literally the only way to survive. And now it really serves me well to have organization because my students appreciate it. They know clearly and easily how they can help because they see how things are organized. So it really does pay off. And it's a way that can kind of lower your stress shoulders a bit if things are clean or you're feeling things are more organized. Because as teachers, we're not just dealing with the students, we have a lot of stuff. 
Okay. We don't just have like recorders or, you know, a couple library books. I mean, there's paint, there's clay, there's all the mess and all of the things. So really having that organized helps your mind to be a little bit calmer and a little bit happier. So that is something worth investing your time into. Also, I would suggest planning fun projects. If you're not already on Facebook, looking around in some of those groups, people share free things all the time that you could do and get inspired by. You can look on Teachers Pay Teachers, you can peek around on Instagram. I shared some of my favorites for all of those in a recent video, my like favorites from 2023. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen that yet. But not only things that you know your students will be excited about, but things that you are excited about too. When you bring that enthusiasm and you bring those fun projects, your behaviors go down, your engagement goes up and you're going to enjoy your job even more. Now, you're not always going to be feeling healthy and you're not always going to be able to come to school every single day. So one thing you can do to cut down on your stress is to have some sub plans, emergency sub plans ready and waiting for when that inevitable thing happens to you this school year when you can't come in. And I recently made a video all about this. I'll make sure that I link this in the description down below. If you don't have emergency plans, come to think of it, I just use my emergency plans. I need to make some new emergency plans, but this is your sign. Get that done so that that is not some stress in the back of your mind and any worry that would come up should you have to miss school and find out at the last minute. How can we better manage our mental health as we acknowledge that we're going through some of these slumps? Well, one thing you can do is just kind of change things up and do things a little differently. Maybe every day after school, you stay after for an hour and a half or something, and then you go home. Well, maybe you can make a plan to stop and get ice cream that you're going to have later on for dessert. Maybe you make a plan you're going to meet up with a friend and go for a walk in the park. Maybe you're going to plan something with your friends or family a few weeks in the future so you have something to look forward to on the weekend. I know for me, going places really helps me to kind of escape and relax. If I'm at school, if I'm at home, I feel like there's a million things that I have to do. But if I'm exploring a new museum or a new place or I'm in a movie, I'm there, I'm immersed in it, and I can really relax. So find what that is for you and take advantage of those things so that you can refresh yourself and you feel good when you come back to school Monday morning. Set up time challenges for yourself so you can kind of gamify your job because it does get monotonous. Can you set a timer? Can I unload the drying rack in three minutes and see if you can beat the timer? Um, maybe have challenges where you have your students do some jobs alongside of you. Maybe you have, okay, there's four things on this to-do list. I'm going to get this done in 45 minutes. And at this time, when my timer goes off, I'm going to leave school. And you challenge yourself to really make that happen. Those things can kind of just help to keep your job a little bit more fun and fresh. Another thing I would highly recommend is when you're doing some of your art room chores, you know, taking things off the drying rack, washing paint brushes, cleaning up your classroom, it's a fun idea to listen to my YouTube channel, Managing the Mess. I have at this point in time over 120 videos to help you reflect on your teaching and help you to feel less alone in this crazy career. Um, you're working really hard. And one thing that you need to do, and I think it's a little bit hard for us to do as teachers, but some days you need to plan things that are just easier. It's okay to do a little bit less. I know for me, this year my kindergarten classes are a little bit shorter and we are doing a sewing project that we have done in the past. I've shared this on YouTube Shorts if you wanna take a peek at it, it's super fun. But we could not go around and help all of the students, the IA and myself in one class period. So we had to divide it up that we spent two class periods sewing. Now what this really meant was half the students got help one day doing this and then the next day that they came back, we helped the rest of the class and any other people that were absent. So we set up centers for the other students to help accomplish that. Was it a little bit of an easier day? Yes, okay, and that just having that every once in a while really helps to not be going, 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 going with all your lessons 
but to have some lessons with a little bit slower pace. And I think your students really appreciate that too. For me, I plan it in at the end of every quarter. It's not a reward for my students. They get it no matter what. Part of my behavior management plan, I call it catch up and pickle day. I have a video with more details, but it gives me a week where it's just nothing for me to plan and prepare because I just set up one um, you know, bunch of fun stations for everyone to do when they come to art that week. So any planning time that I have, even while my students are in my classes during that week, I can be grading things, I can be cleaning things, I can be preparing for the next quarter. So it really mentally helps me that when I go into my teacher work days at the end of the quarter, a lot of that work is already done because you know by the end of the quarter, crazy. So that's something that I do that helps me keep a little bit more sane. Also consider learning new skills. Um, I know I love to go on YouTube and learn like a new project, try it out with my daughter at home. And then if things work out and they're really fun, trying to incorporate that into my class makes things a little bit more um, fun and engaging for me. Another thing I really hope that you will take the time to do is build up other teachers please don't go on social media and be negative. Any art teacher out there is doing the best that they can with what they have and they're trying their best. This is not an easy job. And we really, if you're not hearing it, I'm not hearing it. Um, we're not getting a lot of positive feedback, at least not enough to like keep us going. Like the kids are always saying great things to me, but as far as other adults, and think about this, I'm even on a stage, okay? I've got a YouTube channel. I've got a growing number of followers on Instagram. I'm not even hearing this very often, these positive words. So make sure that you are spreading joy, uh, especially online, because I do see um, teachers that are making comments to others. If, if you're not willing to help, just like keep on scrolling, but encourage people when you see something amazing, let them know that. It really, really does help. It helps to build people up. It helps to give them hope. Everybody gets into those slumps. So make sure that you are spreading the joy so that some of that will eventually come back to you. How can we better manage to physically do our jobs? Well, one thing I would recommend to you is exercising. Now, hear me out because at the end of a school day, you might just be completely exhausted. But if you exercise, it actually gives you more energy. Part of the reason I exercise is just to cross train to do my job. As you know, those boxes of clay, they are heavy. We're hanging hundreds of artworks at a time. We're on our feet, moving all around our rooms, and it really helps if you are physically feeling good so that you can uh, carry out those roles in your job. Make sure that you are prioritizing sleep. I know that is a really tough one. One thing that I do is I set an alarm on my watch for when we need to start getting ready for bed. Just kind of like to let me know, ooh, okay, we need to start winding down. We need to finish up whatever it is that we are doing and move on to brushing teeth and getting into bed. Another thing that I do, it might seem lazy to you, but as soon as I go home, I start to get ready for bed and kind of resetting things for the next day. Because if I leave those things until my, you know, go to bed alarm goes off, I will procrastinate because I think, oh my goodness, I have to get out my clothes for tomorrow. I have to repack my gym bag. I gotta wash my face. So when I come home, I will take a shower, I will put my pajamas on, I will get things ready for the next day. And I'm doing that earlier in the evening while I'm still fresh. So when my go to bed alarm goes off, I can finish what I'm doing. I really just need to brush my teeth and jump into bed. Make sure that you are drinking enough water. I know for me, this is a really tough one. I don't like to touch my water bottle at school because I just feel like our hands are always dirty and germy. So getting a water bottle where I could just kind of lean over and take some sips while I was teaching or between classes was really helpful for me. I do find though that I need to work this better into my day because I'll be chugging water at the gym and then just drinking water um, through the whole evening to try to play catch up and it would be better 
better if I could move that out throughout my day. Think ahead for planning lunches that you are excited about, healthy lunches. Um, but I know if I've got something really fun, like, oh, there's a great salad in my lunch today. I'm looking forward to that like all morning. It really just makes your day even better. Now, if you find that you're in more than a slump and you're kind of getting into that burnout zone, make sure that you watch this video for our teachers next.